Welcome back to Asian Banking and Finance TV. We are joined today with Nick Wilde, the Managing Director of Fiserv, talking about some interesting deals the technology leader is doing in the region and also something very interesting from the financial crisis, so stay tuned. Welcome Nick. Tell us about Fiserv and what they've done in the last 12 months. So in this region we've actually had a very, very um, successful year, very very uh, grat gratifying, um, done a lot of work with uh, existing clients and also gained some new ones, some examples, um, Sanazar Bank in, uh, in Sri Lanka, the third bank, uh, major bank we have down there, um, took our new, uh, took our core core banking system and that's live in under under 12 months which uh, um, is, a, is, is a fantastic result for, for us and them testament to, to, to their uh, their drive. Um, we've had uh, Panin Bank in Indonesia upgraded to our latest uh, core banking solution and also took our new uh, or, or relatively new um, channel solution and, and that'll be rolled out over the next, uh, we're working with them to work out how that gets rolled out over the next year. Again with a desire to sort of take the leadership position they have and 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 maintain and and, and continue to, to stretch that and and extend their one their customer centric vision and capability um, Bangkok Bank last year uh, went live with our mobile banking solution so many people know us for core but we have a, a number of world world-class um, channel solutions um, so they went live with with mobile solution um, they've been a long-standing internet banking customer I think it's fair to say we, we saw, they saw to a certain extent the mobile channel is an extension of, into, in, of the online channel but it's been fantastically successful for them um, and they're looking to see how they can ex extend that capability and continue to, to maintain their leading position. Outside the region I think one that's worth talking about but because it's still international is Tesco um, in the UK. Um, there's a uh, there's been a one Fiserv drive for a long time, and Fiserv used to be a, a holding company. And if you wanted to buy five products from Fiserv, you went and saw five separate divisions. Uh, Tesco really is a, a living testament to uh, the one Fiserv journey that we're taking. So the same journey that banks are taking to try and become customer centric, we, we're taking the same journey. So we, we feel the pain, we understand the challenges. There is um, something like 12 or 15 separate Fiserv solutions sold as an integrated solution and being delivered as an integrated solution to, to a brand new entrant to retail banking in, in, uh, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the UK market. Mobile banking is quite interesting. What kind of initiatives are you seeing in that area? So the mo uh, mobile banking uh, is uh, a relatively new addition for us. We um, we we have a, uh, a but but it's a the, the technology we have is is well proven. It's deployed on on five continents, um, a, a wide variety of, of users. Um, it's incredibly very functionally rich, highly secure, very very well. Um, proven by a number of, of, of larger and smaller clients. BBL, as I say, rolled it out last year in this region. Um, uh, ANZ Bank are also a, a, a user, a number of the, of the New Zealand banks are, are already using it. Um, and and they are the mobile banking's been used in different ways in different in different regions, different countries, depending what the challenge is. I mean, in, in some of the in some of the uh, more developed economies, um, people are deploying it as, a, as an extension of the service channel. But where we're seeing it be especially successful is where people extend it as a as a part of the sales channel, not just the service channel. So acquiring. Uh, segments or, 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 or customers that they wouldn't normally um, be able to uh, be able to attract by offering that, that, that sort of rich functionality. In some of the developing economies, it's an incredibly effective tool for banking the unbanked and 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 bringing back some of the cash economy into the mainstream economy. So we're also seeing in, in, we're seeing interest not just from banks as a cost-effective way to attract unbanked and and and, and service that that client, but also so from a from a government point of view, I mean, get reducing the cash economy and getting it into the, the mainstream and, and doing it rather than by enforcement, by but by attracting people with the, the the solutions that it offers them and the and the opportunity and the products that it offers them to, to change and, 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 and increase the, the quality of their life. I mean that that's a that's a win 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 all round. Now of course the big challenge for banks is how to have a single view of customer. Can you tell us on some of the work you've been doing in this area? So I, I talked before about sort of one five seven customer centricity. I mean, I, I think customer centricity has been a has a, been a conversation piece for a number of years. Um, I think a number of banks have made a lot of banks have made um, strides towards that. 
but the, the, the financial crash over the last year, while, whilst Asian banks uh, were, were better insulated from it and, and I, would, I would posit were, were smarter about how they did business over the last few years and, and didn't suffer quite so, quite so badly, um, where in the, the US and Europe we're seeing a strong focus on cost cutting, here it very is much about, around revenue generation. I mean it has, it has caused um, boardrooms and executives to, to um, sort of redouble their focus on how, how do we get to, to revenue generation. So single view of customer, um, in my mind, you know, big technical challenge and, and lots of people have been working on it and there's, there's lots of smart technology around to do that. In my mind and, and the conversations that I'm having with my customers is not, not just getting that single view of customer but how do we make it, how do we make it actionable. Um, and how do we get the how, how do we get the value out of it, and how do we do, use that to deliver value to our customers? So, um, if, if I if I think of a, a, a couple of uh, pieces of work we've done over the last couple of years, some of some of it when I was international, some of it here. But I mean, we we for instance were working with a um, with a private bank um, who were looking who engaged with us to help them lift their their sales, um, and we work around that not just with the technology but also on the people and process side. How do we reskill? How do we get the behaviour? Behavioral change. How do we how we take that single view of customer and make it actionable at the teller-seller front end and, and and help have true needs-based conversations such that we serve our customers better and thereby earn more revenue. What we found when we did the initial analysis was, whilst they felt they were extremely effective at attracting customers, and the, and they were, they were they were quite good. What nobody had looked at is what they were like at retaining customers. So as a million dollars come, a million people come through the front door, a million and a half were leaving through the back door. That's not just bad news from hey we we go backwards by half a million customers. If it's if a large proportion of those customers are the same because we're either offered them the wrong products or we 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 were chasing hot money or whatever, that's an incredibly expensive model because because you spend money to acquire, um, and if they they leave before the the year or the 18 months where you get your payback, then that's that's a that's a, an incredibly expensive model. So what we did there was use both the technology and the and the consulting services and the behavioural services was to help provide the information that would let the seller, um, the, the salesperson in the bank, target the right people, assess their needs, make sure that there was a match, offer them the right product at the right time, and then begin a long-standing relationship and use that ongoing single view of the customer to, to retain as well as, as, well as cross-sell. So it's making, it's making that information actionable um, and, and perhaps looking at things from a slightly different, action, a, a slightly different angle, a more holistic view. Now, during the financial crisis was a very interesting time for Asian banks. Are there any examples you can think of of how banks actually use single customer view to enhance their business? So, the, so I mean, it, it was very much a it was very much a case of um, you get what you measure. So, the private bankers were being uh, driven incredibly hard for um, you've got to get more meetings, you've got to do more cold calls, you've got to get more of those meetings into um, in, in, into conversations and then into products and all that sort of thing. So, so it was actually having an attrition effect on the private bankers as well. I mean, they were just being driven harder and harder and harder to do that. What we what we did with the bank was to say, take take a take a step back. Let, let's look at how we generate value. Um, and and it's not so much about the number of the meetings and the conversations and the products sold. It's it's about the the value and the quality of them. So, by 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 making the information available to the private banker, by helping them understand that sales and service was integrated, by selling the right product, we are serving our customer. It's not just the old, um, for want of a better word, the McDonald's model. Would you like a credit card with that? You know, what do I have to sell this month's mortgages? Um, we made we made the private banker's life. Um, we made, we made the private bank's life, if you like, more um, not more relaxed, but, but 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 richer because they weren't just on the the treadmill. We made the customer's life better because they were being offered having we were having conversations about what was going on in their life and how do we get the events. And the bank was happier because we were attracting more high quality customers. We were selling more products. We were getting a lift in the number of products because we were selling people stuff that they wanted. And then the natural retention. Um, and and the opportunities for cross sell meant that, that the value went up, and we also we also got the bankers, made, we also um, got the bankers measured on a on a broader range. It wasn't just about acquisition; it was how long do you hang on to them, what's what's the product holdings. Nick, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you again next time on Asian Banking and Finance TV.